Okay. Um, so today we're going to talk about manipulating data. We've done a lot with cleaning. We've done a lot with summarization, but on a larger scale, how do we change the shape and the combination of data we have? Okay, so today we'll talk about learning how to reshape data from wide format to long format. Um, so not actually changing the data itself, but changing how it looks and how it's useful for you to look at or for R to process will do reshape from long to wide. So basically doing the opposite of that. And we'll talk about joining different data sets, which can be really useful if you have stuff stored in different places. And uh, you know, how do you combine your data um, in, a, in a quick and seamless way? OK, so something that might be handy in addition to Candace's lovely cheat sheet uh, there's also a dplyr R cheat sheet that talks a little bit about joining. Uh, the pivoting isn't in here, but if uh, you're interested, this can serve as a nice reference. Uh, so just click on the link here to get to that. And I'll drop that in the chat. Okay, so Transforming your data from wide to long, I think is one of those things that sometimes is easier to visualize than for me to explain. So just take a second and take a look at this GIF. So here it's showing how we're going from wide format to long format and, and back. So we have an ID and some data and we're shifting that to long format. So the data itself is not changing, but rather how the data is being ordered and arranged. Data stored differently in your tibble as you're working with it. And so I'd like to think of why data is having many columns. So for example, if I'm collecting vaccination rate data across different months, and my ID in this case is individual states, I might have multiple columns for different time periods or, or different variables that I'm collecting about that state. Versus in long format, those column names have actually become the data itself. So up here, I have the June vaccination rate. And you can see in this long format, that column name has actually become some data in the, data, in the uh, tibble. Um, and interestingly, you can see that Alabama has been replicated a couple of different times for these particular um, column uh, terms that were formerly column names. Okay, we can also think of why data is having multiple columns or variables per individual or ID. Um, basically, these values are spread across multiple columns. So for each Alabama, I've got several different columns of data. And same thing with Alaska, I've got several different columns of data up here versus in long format, I've got multiple rows per observation. Um, so that would be Alabama or Alaska. And uh, a single column contains those values. Uh, so you can see here, got uh, the ID or the state. Here I've got the name or what we're actually measuring. And then I've just got all my numbers stuck here in this particular column I've called value. Okay, again, data is wider along with respect to certain variables. And so again, you know, maybe you don't have state, maybe you have something like patient, you uh, continue to hold that kind of on the, um, as the ID for your data, but you're actually moving what's in the columns, uh, column names for the wide data, and you're actually sticking it in the data for the long format. Okay, so you may be asking yourself, like, why is this important? Why do I care about changing the format of my data? Why don't I just, you know, use whatever um, format my data has come in, or how, however I collected it? Um, so, why data is easier for us to read 
um, at least for me. <laughs> so I think it's, you know, that makes sense. And, um, you know, as you're collecting more data, you know, maybe you add another month on to the end um, as another variable, it's generally a little easier to look at and there's less actual data to kind of go through. Um, but the long format is easier for R to make plots, do analysis and, and do some other things. Um, so we want to be able to kind of go back and forth. Being able to kind of do pivoting can also help you um, do things and updates to your data, make some changes as well. So um, it'll come in handy and you'll see that in just a little bit. Okay, so the tidier package contains two super useful functions that we'll be talking a lot about, which are pivot longer. Okay, and so this makes those multiple columns into variables. It goes from wide to long format. And you can imagine that pivot wider does the opposite. So it takes uh, a variable and spreads it out into multiple columns. And you may see uh, former functions that did something very similar called uh, this one's equivalent was gather and this one's equivalent was spread. You may see that, but generally these are a little bit more multi-purpose and they're um, actually maintained by the, the RStudio crew. So um, we'd like to try to use these. Okay. And a little bit in this lecture, we'll talk about separate, which we reviewed um, with data cleaning and how that can kind of be useful in combination with some of these, uh, with these pivot functions. Um, also caveat that the reshape um, function exists. They actually, in the documentation, they say it's confusing. So that tells you something. Um, I would not use it. I would try to use these pivot longer and pivot wider, but you may see this come up if you're getting code from other folks or you're looking on Stack Exchange and things like that. Okay, so let's talk about pivot longer. Okay, so again, we're reshaping data from wide to long using the tidier package. And uh, we'll first we need a couple of arguments for pivot longer. So we'll first want to describe which columns we want to actually scrunch down into their own um, into their own variable. We want to give the new data set a, a name for those columns that we're kind of scrunching down that we're pivoting. And we want to tell pivot longer what values we want to go in, in basically the numbers column. Um, so, or sorry, that we want to name, just name that column. We don't want to tell it the values themselves but we want to name it. And so those arguments are calls. And again, those are the columns that are going to be pivoted. The names too, and this is just a, you know, I want to call this new column, you know, name or something like that. And then values too is whatever I want to call that new column that are, is going to contain the numbers. Okay, so let's imagine we have a uh, really simple tibble. It's just one row and three columns, but I want to reshape it to be long. Um, so again, I'm gonna use the pivot longer function, um, but I'm gonna take the data and pipe it in just like we've been doing with a lot of functions, followed by pivot longer. And then I have those three arguments that I just mentioned. So. Here I can use calls and I'm gonna tell it just to pivot everything. And so this is one of our um, tidy select helpers we talked about a little bit earlier. You could list out the columns you wanna pivot here. You could tell it what not to pivot. There's lots of options. We'll talk about that in a second. But um, again, names too is just the name of that new column containing the stuff that you're pivoting. And the values column is um, just the name of that column that's going to contain the numbers. Okay, so we have month and rate up here, and we can see that those have become our new column names here. 
Okay, and then stuff that was column names in the wide data ends up in this month column. Okay, so let's work with a slightly more complicated example. So we'll pull in the uh, Baltimore bus data. So this is, uh, you can do this pretty quickly just with the JHUR package to read this into um, the circ variable or object. Um, and so it's a tibble, um, it's got, um, this is just a preview using head, but it's got day of the week, it's got date of the, of the year, I believe. And then it's got these different um, lines. So there's the orange line, there's the purple line, there's the green line. Um, and then it has boarding, so getting on, a lighting, so getting off, and average. And I just think this is so funny that, um, you know, there's 200 some or 100 some more people that got off the bus than got on. But I think the idea is that the average number is, is probably a good reflection of how many riders you had that day. So I don't know. I think that's kind of funny. But anyway, Baltimore is great at collecting data. So <laughs> let's continue on. So um, one thing we might want to do is, you know, this is a wide data set with lots of different columns for these different bus routes, but maybe we want to pivot that into just one column for um, rider, you know, the description of the, the bus line and, you know, what the measure was. So what we could do is, again, do pivot longer. And we'll, let's say, okay, we're going to name this new column containing all of the, you know, former column names. We're going to name this bar and all of the data we're going to store in this new column number. And all of those columns we want to pivot, um, let's just say use one of our tidy select helpers. We're going to do starts with anything that starts with orange, purple, green. And this is going to collect all of these columns that kind of start with these different route colors and names. Okay. And you'll see we still got date and day that hasn't changed. Um, but now instead of having all those messy columns, we have, um, which may be easier to look at in a spreadsheet. Um, now we have just one column containing all of that information um, and one column containing the numbers that were formerly in those cells. Okay, so again, these tidy select functions, um, you can you know, use different ones depending on what you need, but there's multiple ways to ask for what you want. So instead of selecting all of these columns that start with the different route names, we could just say, oh, you know, I wanna pivot everything except that exclamation point indicating kind of like opposite. Um, I want to pivot everything except day, date, and the daily ridership. Okay, so this should give us the same result. You know, we see 877, 1027. Those are the same numbers. Okay. Okay, so one thing that you can kind of check for as you've pivoted data is actually doing a count by category. And if we were to go ahead and take this data here, this you know, new var variable and new number variable that we've created, take that and count up the number of entries for each category, they should be all the same, okay? Because remember they were distinct columns before and they should have all had the same length. And so it makes sense when we kind of collapse them all together, there's the same number um, of, of entries for each one. It's not like, um, sorry. It's not like uh, this one has a ton more data and, and you know, that column's kind of hanging off the page. Um, so this is a good gut check if you want to do that. Okay, so 
uh, before um, our data was a little messy, but actually pivoting to a long format for this data is actually going to help us clean it up and make a little bit more sense of it. So let's revisit this string replace or str replace function from the stringer package to go ahead and put an underscore in the name of these bus lines and, and alightings, boardings, et cetera, um, to make it a little easier to read. And so in this case, um, I'm going to just mutate in place. So in that case, I'm replacing the var variable with a string replaced version of it, where I've replaced board with underscore board, um, a light with underscore a light, and average with underscore average. Okay. And so, you know, I'm doing all that in place. And so when I take a look at the data set again, I can see that those uh, line colors or line names and the, the measure, you know, boardings, the lightings average um, are separated by underscore. Okay. So like a little nicer to read than uh, what we had over here, you know, just kind of concatenated together. Okay. And you may know what's coming next. Okay, we can separate those into two columns. Okay, so this is like much nicer uh, than to have them all scrunched together. Um, so let's use the separate function to break those off into two unique columns. Um, so we'll do separate um, and we'll separate the var column. We'll separate it into two distinct columns. So line and type. And we'll use that underscore that we added as the basically as the delimiter where it's going to chop off um, the first part of R and put it into a new column. Okay, so a little bit nicer. This orange, purple, whatever line is in one column, and the type of measure that was you know, being performed is in another column. And so this would have been a lot trickier if we had wide data. Um, versus if we had this kind of nice long um, data already. Okay, let's talk about pivot wider. Okay, um, so this is just doing the opposite of what I was just talking about, but this is a little bit easier in that we only have two arguments for pivot wider. So you have the names from, which will be the column name that you're gonna be using to basically create new column names in your wide data. Um, so those are the names that are gonna be spread out. And then what are the values from? This is the column whose contents we're gonna go fill the cells of, of those new columns, okay? And so just like before, we're taking the data, piping it into pivot wider, and then providing those two arguments. Okay, so, um, how does this look in practice? We're just doing the opposite of what we did before. So if we take a look at long data, and I can put it over here as well. It's just a tiny tibble. Um, and we tell it which column we want to basically spread across with the column names um, as names from. And so in this case, it's you know, the different vaccination rates from different months. And we also tell it which, basically which column contains the numbers. Um, and then we can kind of see that that's, you know, been spread, spread wide from, from up here. Okay, again, let's work with slightly more complicated data. Um, so this is the Charm City Circulator data once more, and it's already 
Um, it's basically the version that we cleaned up. And we're just going to plug in those column names. So what is the column of data that I kind of want to spread out? So again, names from, and I'm going to use type here. So before I had type all in one column, but let's say I want separate columns for boarding, alighting, and average, because maybe I just want to keep the average. Okay, and then I just have to tell it what column contains the numbers, um, and those actually are the numbers that populate these cells here. Okay, and with that, I think we're ready to jump into the lab. Um, just really quick, um, the there's not a whole lot um, besides these couple of arguments for the pivot wider and pivot longer functions, um, but it is kind of long, um, you know, just like our summarize function. Um, and so hopefully a little bit of practice will make it a little easier. Um, and again, just if you're thinking about these functions, they do provide you with a little bit of a preview. Um, lots of options for these functions, but we're going to just be sticking with names from um, and values from or names to values to and the calls column. Okay, um, so I'll stop here and we'll jump out into labs. All right, so we talked a little bit about pivoting um, and now we'll get more into joining data sets. So we're gonna use a couple of really useful functions from the dplyr package to do that. Um, basically we're combining data sets. This usually happens on some kind of key variable, uh, usually something like ID, or maybe in our case, like with the data sets we were working for, with before, maybe on state, something like that, uh, but some kind of ID uh, by which to uh, identify individual observations. So one thing we can do is uh, to use the question mark join to see different types of joining in um, uh, different kinds of options we have, different functions. So let's say um, I'm interested in kind of looking at that join and it tells me okay I've got um, inner join left join we'll talk a little bit more about that in a moment okay all right so what are these different types of joins we can do Okay, if you're familiar with um, some of the other programming languages, maybe like something like SQL, um, it's very, very similar. Inner join is a join that takes two data sets, and it's only going to keep rows that match for both of them. So let's say we have data sets X and Y, we're only going to keep rows that match for both of them. Okay. Full join is going to keep all rows, every single one, um, even if there's no matches in, in X and there's no matches in Y. Left join keeps all rows of X, even if they're not in Y. So it keeps them all, but Y, you know, not keeping any that are not a match there. Right join uh, keeps all rows of Y, even if they're not in X. And so uh, you may be thinking, okay, these are basically the same thing. Um, just looking at a different data set. Why don't I just reverse the, you know, the X and the Y, their place in this uh, in this function? Um, and the answer is you actually can, you can, but it um, it changes the order of the columns a little bit. We'll talk about that in a second. <clears throat> 
and um, anti-join would keep all rows in X not in Y, just keeping the columns from X. So that can be useful if you're looking for maybe missing data and things like that. You know, what do you not have in, in this Y data set? Okay, so let's work with a couple uh, or these two kind of simple data sets. You know, let's say I have a data set of A states, um, so Alabama and Alaska, and I have a data set of cold states. So that's uh, Maine and Alaska. It's very original here, um, but I'm just gonna type those over here. We'll take a look at them. Oh, uh, I think I overwrote it a little bit later in the data set. So maybe uh, we'll just go off of what's here. Okay, move the Zoom stuff. Great. Okay, so let's see what happens when we kind of play around with this data set a little bit, or these two data sets a little bit. Okay, again, I think it's easy to, easier maybe to see what's happening than for me to explain it. But inner join is keeping all of the ID or the index that you're using uh, in both data sets, but none that are, are missing in one or the other. So in this case, I have one and two in this X data set and one and two in the Y data set. And that's all that's kept because there's a match in both sides. Okay, so let's say I do inner join of this data A's data set and this data cold data set. Um, and because, um, because Alaska was the only one in both, that's all that I get. Um, and it's telling me, oh, it's giving me a little feedback. Okay, it's joining by state. Um, but all I'm gonna do to do that is use this inner join function and then tell it the first data set and the second data set. Pretty straightforward. Um, and so then if I've got these two columns in X and this column in Y, now I've got all three columns in that inner join data set. Okay, let's talk a little bit about left join. And so this is keeping everything that's on the left-hand side, but not on the right-hand side. So it's getting rid of this four index because there's no match for it on the left side. Okay, so what happens um, to our data when we do a left join? And actually, I'm gonna rerun some of this stuff. Um, so pardon me while I do that just so we can kind of look at the data. Okay. Okay. And you can ignore that warning. That's not a super big deal. All right. Um, okay, so when I do this left join, I'm keeping everything on the left side but not the right side. So just a reminder what our cold data set looks like. We've got Alabama and Alaska for A's and Maine and Alaska for this cold data set. And so if I'm left joining, even though there's no data for Alabama in this cold data set, it's still saving that, um, that observation, that index. Okay, so one thing that can be really useful for giving you a clue as to what's going on um, is this tidy log package. So you may need to go ahead and install it, um, which you can do with install.packages um, and just go ahead and load it um, and then perform your joins as usual. So let's say uh, something, go ahead and load that. Okay, it's already installed for me, so it's previewing here. All right, you get a lot of like uh, lengthy messaging um, and then just perform your join as normal. 
Uh, so I've got data A's and data cold. And it's given me a lot of uh, extra output. It's given me a clue as to what's going on. And the way we interpret the output from tidy log, so it's like, okay, um, here are rows that are only in X. It's got one row and that you know, corresponds with what we know that Alabama is only in that first data set. Then rows only in Y. So we know that there's one row that's not found in X, uh, but the fact that it's in parentheses is telling me, okay, I, I saw that, but I'm not gonna keep it in the final data. So it's just keeping that as a note, but in parentheses, it's not gonna be added to the final data. And it's saying, oh, okay, I found it match too. So Alaska was in both data sets, giving me a total of two rows. So it gives you a little more insight into what's going on. Okay, what does right join look like? So basically this is the uh, opposite. So if we wanna keep everything that's in Y, but not X, um, we can do a right join. Okay, um, and so when we run the right join, we're doing the same order of arguments. So uh, in the left join that I did here, I did data A's first and then data cold. I'm doing the same order here, um, and you can see that this time it's saying, okay, well, there was a row that wasn't a match in X. It's telling me that there's one row, but the fact that it's in parentheses is telling me, okay, I'm, I'm dropping that. I'm just going to get rid of it. And so now uh, we'll see. Uh, the main data in the final data versus um, just having Alaska for something like an inner join or having Alabama if it was a left join. Um, and the variable didn't disappear. It's uh, hanging off the end because I've got kind of a small window going on here. Okay, so why don't I just do a left join and switch the arguments? Um, so you can do that. Um, and in this case, like this would be very similar, uh, basically the same data as this right join. I'm again, switching my arguments in my left join, but you'll notice the, basically the, arguments or sorry, the output from the tidy log is really similar, but the order of columns is different. So that's just something to think about. You know, if you want your, basically the data in X is maybe more important or more, you know, you want to be able to view it really easily. Maybe that data in X is just a little bit important. That's the one you would want to go first because the order of the columns will just be rearranged a little depending on the order you use here. Okay, and what about full join? So full join, um, this is a great join to do if you're worried about getting rid of data or you're just like, I wanna keep everything uh, because it keeps all indices in either data set. Okay, and so what's the output when we, if we were to do a full join of these, this A data and the cold data that we were, that have been talking about, um, it's telling me there's a row that's only in X, it's telling me there were, there's a row that's only in Y, you notice no parentheses here, it's telling me there's a matched row, and I should have three lines in my data. And that's what I see. Um, and basically, you know, there's some missing data because um, there was basically uh, not complete overlap among our two data sets. Um, but now there's all three columns, all three states basically kept all the data that we have. Okay, so you may see, okay. You may see this message in your tidy log 
includes duplicates. And so let's talk a little bit about um, what that means. And I'm gonna run a little bit more of my data here. Just gonna go down and run all. Okay. Um, so I should have this data A's, data loaded, and data cold. Okay. Um, so this data looks a little bit different. So now I have, uh, you know, one data set that's got one line for each index or each ID. And in this data set, I've got more than one for each ID. And I've got maybe different months or something like that. So what does this includes duplicates? So this is what happens when you have matches between the two data sets, but some of the data has to be duplicated in order for that to happen, which isn't necessarily a problem, but it's something you wanna be aware of. And so what would that look like if we're doing a left join um, between these two data sets? So let's say left join data A's and data cold. Okay, so considering like my original data up here is just, you know, one line for each state in the new data that's, you know, that I've performed the left join on, um, I can see that this data has actually been duplicated. So there's now two lines uh, for Alaska and the, and the state bird. Okay, and so maybe, you know, you have a column that is a total number of vaccinations or something like that. And if you were trying to sum over this column, it may not be accurate because you have that data duplicated. So it's just something to be aware of when you're joining and there are multiple indexes that are the same in one of your data sets. But tidylog can help with this because it lets you know uh, when you're doing that. Okay, and so this is just a visualization of what that looks like. So over here, two and X2 are only appearing once, but because there's two matches in our Y data set, that data actually gets duplicated. I like the visualizations. <laughs> There's uh, also some other fun uh, GIFs of things happening with data sets uh, if you go and look at uh, this person's GitHub. Okay, so maybe you're getting really annoyed with the tidy log messages. Um, you can unload namespace tidy log and that just gets rid of the tidy log messaging. Okay, um, so we can also create a new column to tell us if data is duplicated, you know, if there's an index that's appearing multiple times. Uh, so we can use the duplicated function for that. And, you know, let's say um, we've got a vector one through five, and we're asking, is anything in that vector duplicated? It's saying no, because I have one, two, three, four, or five. Totally fine. I'm not seeing the same number twice. Um, but let's say we had a combined vector. Oops, might need a parentheses there. Something that looks like that. It's got six numbers and it's got two ones. Um, it's going to tell me for each one whether it has seen it in the data before. Um, so this second one doesn't tell me on the first one, but the second time it sees something, it's saying, oh, that's duplicated. So duplicated uh, would give a true output. And so we can leverage that if we wanna make a new column that tells us if something has been seen before. So let's take our left joined data. And so that's uh, this right here and right here. And we'll make a new column um, called uh, like duplicate or dupe state 
Um, and all we have to say is this duplicated function and then which column we're actually checking. And so if we were to do uh, the same up here, let me make sure that I've assigned it. Okay, it's telling me it's joining by state. Great, that's what we want. Um, and then let's say I do left join, mutate, and then dupe state is duplicated of state column. And so now it's added a new column for that. But, you know, let's say we want to see is uh, month duplicated. We could do that as well. Make sure you use the correct spelling. And because there's no rep, um, replicates of month, it's giving me false for all of those. So there's no duplicated months in my data. Okay, um, so maybe uh, you want to specify how to join your two data sets. Um, you can give it, in addition to the two data set arguments here, you can give it this by argument to tell it, oh, you know, state is the thing I want to join on. That's the ID that's going to link these two data sets. Um, by default, it's going to use all of the column names that are in common between the two data sets to join them. And so the by argument is really handy when you have basically the data sets use the same ID, but the columns just called something different. Um, you can use this by um, and then a combine of basically the column name in data set X and the column name in data set Y. So, you know, maybe you have state is uppercase here and state is lowercase here. You can still join them together. You just have to tell R what are the names of those columns that we're joining on. Um, and you can also say, you know, you want to join on multiple columns, um, but not all of them or some kind of subset of columns. You can tell R with the by argument um, okay, I want to join on column one and I want to join on column two. Okay, and we're almost at the end, but um, one thing that may uh, command that I think is useful um, is this set diff. Um, and we might want to use that to determine what indexes are in the first data set that aren't in the second. So let's say, okay, I, I want to join this state bird data set to the vaccination data set, but I want to figure out what state bird data I have that I don't have vaccination for. So I can use set diff for that. But I'm going to need to pull the column first because it's working on a vector. Okay, and so let's say I go ahead and pull the state, so that ID column, I pull the state for A states, or in name it A states, and I pull the state column from the, uh, the cold data set, so that's going to be cold states. And so I want to see what states are in this A data set that aren't in the cold data set, and it's telling me, okay, just Alabama. And if I reverse the order of the two um, basically vectors of states that I'm looking at, and I say, okay, well, which ones are in cold that's not in A states? I can just say that first, cold states, comma, A states, and it's telling me, okay, well, Maine is not in the, um, in the other data set. Okay, so useful if you want to get a quick snapshot of maybe what's missing in certain data sets without doing something like an anti-join or um, looking for a bunch of NAs or something like that. Okay, um, so that brings us to the end and we'll jump into our labs to kind of talk a little bit about joining and uh, recap some other stuff. <laughs>